Tomorrow we are celebrating the 28th Republic Day. On this auspicious occasion, I am happy to greet all of you, my countrymen at home and abroad, and convey to you my good wishes. India has rightly been described as the largest democracy in the world. Democratic processes have taken firm and abiding root in our country. Our democracy is on the eve of yet another milestone in its progress. Soon we shall have elections to the Lok Sabha. A parliamentary democracy derives its strength and authority from the will of the people in whom resides the sovereign power to choose the government. Our people have time and again shown their political maturity and our electoral machinery has earned a reputation for the observance of highest standards of impartiality and integrity. I appeal to all political parties to eschew bitterness and rancor in their election campaign and help maintain an atmosphere of peace and calm in the country. Acts of violence and indiscipline are incompatible with the practice of democracy. We enter the new year in a mood of hope and confidence. Thanks to the determined efforts of the government and enthusiastic popular participation, the country has made rapid strides in all spheres of national activities. There is now a very comfortable level of buffer stock of food grains. There has been a sustained drive against the black money economy and smuggling and for fuller utilization of industrial capacities, efficient procurement of food grains and successful export promotion. The rate of growth of industrial production during the year has been about 10 percent, the highest in any single year recorded so far. What is even more gratifying is that the increase has been appreciable in vital industries like power generation, coal, steel, fertilizers, newsprint, cement and aluminium. The performance of public sector enterprises has been particularly remarkable. All these have contributed to containing the inflationary pressures. In a world in which high rates of inflation have become almost universal, our countrymen can congratulate themselves on this achievement. The country has moreover made headway in a field which was previously the preserve of the more developed industrial nations. Our consultancy firms, both in the public and private sectors, have proved their worth with the result that not only countries of West Asia, Southeast Asia and Latin America, but also some in Europe are interesting them with responsibilities for design, engineering and erection, supervision of steel, heavy electricals and such other plants in the face of stiff competition from the world's leading firm. I am sure India's technological maturity will pave the way for ever increasing cooperation between us and other developing countries. Our successes should not, however, make us complacent and blind us to our shortcomings. The recent spurt in prices of edible oil, raw cotton, sugar, etc., which is not so much due to shortages of these commodities but mainly to speculative activity emphasizes the need for setting up effective cooperatives and for vigilance to curb antisocial activities. The scope of the public distribution system has to be widened considerably to include all essential commodities of mass consumption. We must also build buffer stocks of many commodities besides cereals so that we are able to control the price line. We know from experience that the most effective method of checking the activities of antisocial middlemen is to organize cooperatives for production, marketing and consumption. I would like to reiterate my appeal to public-spirited citizens all over the country to build up 
genuine cooperatives in every village and every mohalla so that men and women of goodwill and dedication everywhere can ensure self help through mutual help our country has opted for planned development the essence of planning is the conscious directioning of resources through carefully thought out program i believe the time has come to review our planning and make it more and more rooted in the local resources for that is the only way to raise the standard of living of the people especially the less privileged sections of the society implementation of such plan calls for increased mobilization of resources both human and material this will require ruthless cutting down of conspicuous consumption and extravagant expenditure the ideals of simplicity and austerity to which we always pay lip sympathy must become a way of life with us it is a pity that our richer classes are blindly copying the lifestyles of the affluent societies of the west and the industrial structure is largely oriented to meeting the insatiable needs of this small minority this untenable concept must change and the industry must be made to produce articles of mass consumption at reasonable prices growth equity and self reliance which are the cherished goals of our planning process are capable of achievement when there is not only a sense of involvement and dedication on the part of all citizens but also that equal opportunities for all are ensured i am confident that these will be forthcoming in an ample measure to take our country forward in its quest for a just and equitable society it is the historic responsibility of the present generation to inspire a sense of security and self confidence in the minds of all citizens irrespective of caste community or region a positive force that can contribute to our development is the spirit of healthy nationalism which refuses encouragement to fissiprous tendencies india must live before india can grow and successfully tackle the immense problems of poverty ignorance ill health that face her at present national integration is as basic to her survival as it is for her development we must transcend the divisive forces of casteism communalism linguism and regionalism and forge not merely political unity but the unity of mind and hearts of all our people in spite of our size and immense diversity india has maintained through the ages the concept of unity and identity and has tried to blend out of many cultural elements a rich and harmonious national ethos i appeal to all our people to uphold and foster this great tradition and make india prosperous and happy friends i have an abiding faith in the great destiny that awaits our motherland the innate goodness of our people and their capacity to face challenges from within and without have stood many tests and have emerged with added strength we have abundant human and material resources let us on this day resolve through consent and cooperation to build in this ancient land of ours a new social order free from rancor and exploitation and friendly to all mankind jai hind